Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 953, Pratjagaraha. Jagaraha gives the idea of wakefulness. And pra, the prefix pra, is an intensifier or suggests in a special way. So, prajagara means he who is always awake. He's awake day and night, and Parashrabhata explains this to mean that he remains awake. Vishnu remains awake day and night. He doesn't sleep like us. Uh, particularly for the protection of his devotees. It can be taken to mean that he's always awake. Yes, that's the basic meaning. It can be taken to mean that he's always awake, thinking of ways to help the jivas to attain him. It can also mean that he's awake, or can be especially said that he's awake to protect his devotees, just like we find farmers often remain awake at night to protect their crops, particularly at night in many parts of India, wild pigs come and they ravish the crops unless the farmers are there they, they'll have flares and they'll bang drums and this way they keep the, the pigs away. So Vishnu is awake day and night. He doesn't sleep as we do. Uh, he doesn't need to sleep. We think of Krishna who apparently at night goes to sleep like a very good boy. Yashoda Ma, she puts him to bed. But in a short time, while everyone else is asleep in the house, Krishna slips out the window and he's off to meet the gopis at night. And then Krishna has his pastimes of sleeping. Uh, we find that at the end of the night, Krishna and Radha, having spent the night in loving affairs, they're embraced together and they have to be woken up by the various devotees and the parrots, maybe even the monkeys, wake them up so they can get back to be in their beds to make a show as if they were sleeping all night very comfortably in their beds. Also, it's described in Krishna's Dwaraka Leela, that he lies asleep at night, embracing his wives, Srila Prabhupada explains in Krishna book, but the wives don't become very happy, or they become rather unhappy, when the cocks start crowing early in the morning, very early, they may start well before sunrise, and they do, they do so, uh, Famously, the cock crows, and then dharmic people wake up early before sunrise, and Krishna awakes at the crowing of the cocks to go about his early morning activities, and the queens headed by Rukmini are not very happy about this. So Krishna apparently sleeps, that's all part of his pastimes, but at the same time, he's always awake, prajagara. As Paramatma, Krishna is always awake within the hearts of all living beings, supervising the activities, the interactions of everything within the universe. <clears throat> Prasha Bhatta quotes from Kathopanishad, Ya eshu supteshu jagarti kamam kamam purusho nirmimana. Remaining awake, the Supreme Personality of Godhead creates the objects of desire seen in dreams. 
dreams, that strange phenomenon whereby all kinds of unimaginable things go on in dreams. It's, it's like a kaleidoscope of the mind which mixes up things in all kinds of strange ways. Uh, most of the dreams, we, most people don't remember most of their dreams. There are various theories of psychologists and neurologists as to the nature of dreams, as to the nature of sleep, but they admit that they're a long way from understanding the, phenomena, the phenomenon of sleep and even more so that of dreams. But we, the Vedic theists, having learned from Shastra and from the Acharyas, we can know that dreams that we experience are all creations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who dispenses karma in the form of dreams, that we may have pleasurable dreams or horrific dreams, and he also dreams. But his dream is real in as much as in his yoga nidra, his sleep, his mystical slumber, in his dream, the, all the universes emanate from his body. So the whole material world is the dreaming condition of Mahavishnu, but then in the form of Garbhodakshai Vishnu and Kshirodakshai Vishnu, he enters the universe and as Kshirodakshai Vishnu, he remains awake, overseeing everything. He creates the dreams. Uh, they're very unusual phenomenon. They can be portents of various good or bad things that will happen in various parts of the world. There are persons who can interpret dreams. There's this Vedic science of that, like so many Vedic sciences. Uh, much of it has become forgotten. We have in the Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 7, Text 25, Buddha Jagaranam Svapna Sushuptir Iti Vrittayaha Tayenai Vanubhuyante Sodhyaksha Purusha Paraha. Purusha Paraha, notice these words, that means the person, the Supreme Person, who is above everything. He's superior, he's supreme. Srila Prabhupada's translation of this verse. Intelligence can be perceived in three states of activity. Wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. That's jagarnam is the waking state. Swapna is the state of dreaming. And deep sleep is the sleep which is so deep that it may be hard to wake us up for, from it, like Muchukunda or Kumbhakarna. Uh, very deep, dreamless sleep. So these are three phases of consciousness with respect to sleep or not sleeping. This is all described in the Vedic literature long before Western psychologists got to start thinking about it. Vedanta Sutras examine the phenomenon of deep sleep and they say that's something like being merged in Brahman, taking from the Shastras. Everything in Vedanta Sutra is taken uh, from, mostly from, uh, uh, the explanations are mostly based on Shruti, Vedanta, Upanishads. So it's explained there, it's like Brahman in which there's conscious, consciousness, it's, it's having reached Brahman in a sense, in as much as the consciousness is very still, very steady. <clears throat> the dreaming state, humans have it, and 
animals may have it also. I know that from my <laughs> experience as a child and seeing the dog in our house having different kinds of dreams, sometimes wagging his tail and it's a happy dream and sometimes making s s whimpering sounds as if he's having a nightmare. So intelligence, reading the translation of this verse again, intelligence can be perceived in three states of activity, wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. The person who perceives these three is to be considered the original master, the ruler, the supreme personality of Godhead. So the, the word given here is adhyakshaha. Uh, Srila Prabhupada has translates this as one who perceives literally. It means one who, whose eyes are above, one who oversees. So the Supreme Lord oversees or facilitates the three conditions of, of intelligence or consciousness. The sleeping state, in with dreams, the sleeping state without dreams, and the waking state. These are the three basic states. And of course, there is a state also between waking and sleeping. Sometimes one may be very lightly sleeping and one's dream merges into the consciousness which is perceived by external senses. For instance, one may be having a dream and there's some very loud sound starts uh, in the proximity of the sleeping body. It may be, just like here in India, it's quite common in the middle of the night, someone will start playing a loudspeaker very loudly. So you start to hear that in your dream and that mixes with your dream. Or if someone is awake but very tired, sleep deprived, then they can start to dream even while awake, even while standing up, so that their conscious state, their, their external consciousness mixes with the dreaming state. And then in intoxication, it, it, one may have hallucinations. There are so many stages of consciousness. But in summary, the Supreme Lord is the overseer of all of these. When we go to sleep, we take it for granted that we will awake at some point. What is this going to sleep and awakening? How does it happen? What is it? Again, scientists, neurologists, they may study this, but it's, it's very... Uh, hard to fathom out even why humans need to sleep. Some animals sleep for months on end. Bears, they hibernate. Tortoises, they hibernate for months on end in the, in the winter. Some animals require very little sleep. We, we go in the goshala, the cow shed, at night and we often see the cows are awake during they sit down throughout the night but you hardly see them asleep sometimes they put their head across like this some animals sleep very very little and some sleep more babies tend to sleep baby human babies dog babies they tend to sleep for a long time even after coming out of the womb uh, but we take it for granted that we will awake when we go to sleep. Uh, of course, people die in their sleep, and that's sometimes considered that's a peaceful sleep, although it could be that you get a heart attack or, or some uh, sleep apnea, you can't breathe, you, you choke to death in your sleep. So it may not be so peaceful as it might seem that you just go to sleep and wake up or don't wake up, <laughs> you just float off out, the consciousness never comes back. But how is it that we go to sleep? 
How is it that we awake? It's because the Paramatma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is overseeing us. When we're asleep, he's not asleep. He's looking after us. He's watching over. And at the proper time, he wakes us up. The cause of all causes is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It may be that scientists have theories about sleep and waking, and they may be true to a, a large extent, but ultimately it is because Vishnu, Prajagara, is overseeing, is making sure that we sleep, we wake up, or he may be deprive us. Why have I got such terrible insomnia? Chinta mapari mayam cha, because as demons, I'm a demon is full of anxiety, so he can't sleep. Oh, we may have so many anxieties and we can't sleep. All these psychological states are overseen by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sleeping rejuvenates the mind and the body too much. No, too much will make us more tired. So we have to know also not to sleep too much, not to sleep too little. Yukta Swapnava Bodhasya Yoga Bhavati Dukaha. Krishna gives the uh, idea that our sleeping should be regulated. And that, that's one of the factors in practicing yoga. Shankaracharya also interprets the name as Vishnu, Prajagara, is always awake. It's just his nature. Nitya Prabuddha Svarupatvat Jagati Iti Prajagara. So it's his very nature to be always awake, not only awake, but alert, intelligent, Prabuddha, uh, aware of everything, understanding everything. Some of the sub-commentators on Shankara interpret this to mean that Bhagavan is not affected by the mode of ignorance, tamogun, by nescience. It's not that kind of sleep. He sleeps, but it's not like our sleep, which is a, a, a result of tamogun, especially excessive sleep, is a result of the influence of the mode of ignorance. This is confirmed in Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Text 32, which discusses the phenomenon of the Supreme Personality of Godhead sleeping, but not sleeping in the way that we do. His sleep is fully transcendental as everything he does. The verse goes as follows. Nyasyedam atmani jagad vilayambu madhye sheshet mana nijasukhanu bhavo nirihaha yogena milita drig atmani pita nidras turye stito natu tamo nagunams chayung she. So, very clearly says that the sleep of the Supreme Lord is not a product of the nescience, of the darkness, of the tamagun, of sleep of ordinary mortals. The prayer goes as follows. O my Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, after the annihilation, the creative energy is kept in you who appear to sleep with half-closed eyes. Actually, however, you do not sleep like an ordinary human being, for you are always in a transcendental stage beyond the creation of the material world, and you always feel transcendental bliss. As Karano Dakashai Vishnu, you thus remain in your transcendental status, not touching material objects. Although you appear to sleep, this sleeping is distinct from sleeping in ignorance. Another verse that comes to mind is from the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. 
Yanishasarvabhutanam Tasyang Jagarti Sangyami Yasyang Jagrati Bhutani Sanisha Pashyatomunehe What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self controlled, and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. It's an analogy that what is like day for the, the for the transcendentalist is like night for the materialist and vice versa. And almost literally because uh, civilized people, they sleep at night and remain awake in the day. And uncivilized people, they like to be awake at night, which is ruled by tamogona and they sleep in the day. One other term for rakshasa is nishacha, those who move around at night. Of course, someone who's very advanced in spiritual consciousness, they hardly sleep at all. But the Supreme Lord, he oversees the, the waking and the sleeping of the great transcendentalists and of the great demons also. A practical example of how the Supreme a practical example of how the Supreme Lord is Prajagara is from the Ramayana. The battle of Lanka has not yet begun. It's about to begin. The monkey army is camped outside the city of Lanka on the seashore, surrounding the city. The guards of the monkeys, they're going around the camp to oversee, to protect, especially the tent where Ram and Lakshman are staying is protected, but the guards fall asleep. The monkey warriors fall asleep. They've, they've had a long, hard journey to come to Lanka. They're very tired. Bhagavan Sri Ram, who, who was enacting the pastimes of sleeping, he awakes, he knows what's going on, he awakes, and he himself goes around the camp and carrying his famous bow with his arrows, he protects the whole army himself. The principle is, as the Acharyas point out, the one who is protecting us during the day is also protecting us during the night. When the whole world is asleep, he is awake to protect us. We have some kind of egoism that we, we look after ourselves during the day, but at night, we don't know what's going on. We lose awareness of what's going on around us. Theoretically, it's a very dangerous position. Anyone can come and just attack us and kill us. We know children, they don't like to sleep alone. They like to be with their parents. Women don't like to be left alone at night. They like to be with their husbands. The feeling of protection. But we should know that Bhagavan is protecting us all. The same, Bhagavata, the same Bhagavan who protects us during the day protects us at night. We are helpless and powerless in the day and the night. But Prajagara protects and vanquishes also, as required. He's especially the protector of his devotees. From Ram Leela, we also know that Lakshman, going to accompany Rama to the forest for 14 years, he prayed to Nidra Devi, the goddess of sleep, you just leave me for 14 years. So he would remain awake all night in the forest protecting Sri Rama. 
Another commentator, Raghunath Tirtha, gives the understanding that Prajagra means Vishnu who liberates the topmost devotees from the clutches of sleep. We know from Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, one of his names given is Gudakish, who has conquered over sleep. Our own Srila Prabhupada slept very minimally, sometimes not at all. He just kept on working for Krishna. Satya Sanda Tirtha gives another meaning altogether. Praja means he who creates. Aga, he takes this definition of the, of the short word Aga to mean he who resides in Venkatachala and Ra Ramanti. So he who creates and enjoys residing in the company of his devotees in Venkatachala. The quality of always being awake is particularly applicable again to the Paramatma who sees that all the different elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, they're all active day and night. The body may be sleeping, but the elements within the body never sleep. They're always active. If sleep meant that everything stopped acting, all the functions of our body stopped acting, that would be death. How do they go on day and night without our knowledge of how they're working? That is overseen by Paramatma who makes sure that everything is working day and night. The sun never sleeps. The prana in every body never sleeps. As long as the body is alive, then the prana leaves it altogether. The atma never sleeps. Bhagavan oversees all of this, and he never sleeps. Baladev Vidya Bhushan, in the present series of names, is interpreting this in terms of Krishna's dancing in the Rasa Leela with the gopis. And he, Prajagara, remained awake, Jagara, with the gopis. He remained awake with them the whole night, which was turned into Praveshita. The pra prefix means it was turned into, it was converted. So it was converted into what? The length of the night was converted into the same length of the night of Brahma. Without Krishna and the gopis staying awake for such a long time, those unlimited and wonderful qualities of the gopis would not be fully realized by Krishna himself. And Baladev quotes from Sukadev Goswami and the Srimad Bhagavatam in this connection, Brahma Ratra Upavrite, that a whole night of Brahma was passed in the Rasa Leela. Wish all the devotees sweet dreams of Krishna. May Krishna bless us by appearing day and night in our consciousness. Shantakaram Bhujagasayanam Padmanabham Suresham Vishvadhara Gaganasadrisham Meghavarnam Shubhangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamalanayanam Yogi Bhidhyanagam Yam Vande Vishnum Bhavabhayaharam Sarvalokai Kanatam Jayati Janani Vaso Deviki Janma Vado Yadu Vara Parishat Swaridor Bhir Asyan Dharmam Stiracharavrijana Gana Susmita Sri Mokena 
Rajapuravanitanam Vardhayan Kamadevam Bahapiram Natavarava Pukarneo Karnikaram Bibradvasa Kanaka Kapishang Vijayan Team Jamalam Randran Vailnor Adhara Sudhaya Purayan Gopa Vrindayar Vrindaranyam Svapada Ramanam Pravishad Gita Kirtihi Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vanayaiva Svadyo Yenad Bhuta Madhuri Ma Kidrisho Vamadiyaha Sokhyang Chasyamad Anubhavata Kidrishan Veti Lobhat Tad Bhavar Dyasamajani Shachi Garbha Sindho Harindu Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna.